Sori is a 17-year-old boy who became an orphan after the destruction of his village. One day, while exploring some ruins, he became the shepherd, the only one who can master all elements and overpowered the god of calamity. In ancient times, seraphims were worshipped by humanity because they used to save people from darkness by using their powers of fire, earth, water, and air. Humans and seraphims lived together in harmony for a long time, but humans started to fight each other, causing calamity generating negative emotions and impurity known as malevolence. This malevolence can transform any living and dead human into monsters called Hellions. As a result, their connection with Seraphim was shattered. Humans are now unable to see or hear Seraphims, and only the noble one called Shepherd can see and interact with them. As a child, Sori came into possession of a book called The Celestial Record, and from that point on, he was fascinated with ancient ruins. One day, Sori ventures out along with his best friend Miklio, the Seraph of Water and finds a sealed ruin. He believes that the sealed ruin is the capital of Seraphim, where humans and Seraphim used to live together so they decide to explore it. But his gramp Zenris appears and forbids them from exploring the ruin. Later, he tells Miklio about the legends mentioned in the celestial record of Shepard's arrival, when the world will be in danger to bridge the connection between humans and Seraphim. The two sneak into ruins, where Sori finds many ancient murals. Suddenly darkness covers the cloud and lightning strikes them. They run and dodge lightning, but both accidentally fall into the pit, where they find an unconscious human girl named Alicia. After waking up, Alicia asks Sori if he is a shepherd and tells him that she is in desperate need of Shepard's help to save the world engulfed with darkness from calamities. Sori brings her to his village, Alicia. She pleads to the Seraphims for help, even though she can't see and hear them. But her plea seems to go unheard, making her question the legends of Seraphim. All villagers and his gramps instruct Sori to send Alicia back before she brings calamity to their village. But then he convinces Gramps to let her stay because he wants to waifu her, I mean, help her. In the following days, he spends his time with Alicia and learns that she lives in Lady Lake, the capital of Hayland, where the Legend of Sacred Blade Festival takes place. In this festival, people participate in the Trial of Blade, in which whoever takes out the Sacred Blade will become the Shepherd, but nobody has taken it out as of yet. One day Sori learns that Alicia has lost her friends because of the chaos in the world. He tells her that the prophecies of the Celestial Records are real, giving her hope and reveals he dreams of investigating ancient ruins all over the world, so he can once again reunite humans and seraphim. Before leaving, Alicia reveals that she trusts the legends more now after feeling the presence of seraphim in the village. After she leaves, a hellion intrudes into their village. Sori and Miklio chase after the intruder and stop hellion from killing a seraphim. Sori charges forward to strike hellion with his sword, but hellion chokes him and throws him around after dodging his attack. Miklio interrupts Hellion from attacking Sori using his magical icicles. Sori takes this chance and corners Hellion by landing a heavy blow in his stomach, but Hellion runs away. Later, Sori realizes that Hellion's true target was Alicia and decides to leave his village to save her. Miklio joins him in his journey and shows him Alicia's blade he found in ruin earlier. It has a royal crest on it, meaning she is most probably a princess. Sori and Miklio reach the capital of Hayland, Lady Lake with the help of a girl named Rose, who gives them a merchant pass, allowing them to enter any city freely. They are both amazed after seeing the beautiful city and lively people enjoying the Sacred Blade Festival. Later, they encounter the Hellion, who was after Alicia and decide to chase him. Before running away, he reveals to them that Princess Alicia is the target of assassination so he is not the only one they should look out for. Sori and Miklio enter the palace where the Trial of Blade is being held. He notices that no human except him can see the Lady of the Lake, a seraph of fire residing beside the blade. When the final trial of the festival ends, Alicia announces to the crowd that they will not fight with their neighbor Rollins. They will only strike back when Rollins attacks them first. The malevolence inside the palace increases after hearing her speech because of the disappointment and fear in the audience. Suddenly, Hellion engulfed in flames breaks into the palace due to the intense malevolence around. Sori quickly approaches Alicia to protect her from the assassin, but she asks him to deal with Hellion instead. Sori asks the Lady of the Lake named Layla to help him, but she tells him that only Shepard can purify Hellions. He then realizes that his dream aligns with what Shepard is supposed to do, and decides to pull out the blade. 
forming an ancient contract with Layla, making her a sublord and him a shepherd's vessel, meaning he can use the abilities like purification, sensing malevolence, and other powers beyond humankind by calling sublords by their ancient name given by him. After becoming a shepherd, Sori unleashes his true power and strikes Hellion with his sword engulfed in flames, and then purifies the Hellion by using his flaming sword. He then collapses after the battle due to excessive use of power. He wakes up and Alicia gives him the shepherd's attire. As a gift to show gratitude for saving them from Hellion's attack, Sori introduces Miklio and Layla to her but realizes that she can't see or hear them. Under Layla's guidance, he starts to concentrate while holding Alicia's hand, managing to let Alicia communicate with Layla and Miklio for a short time. Sori and his group go out into town where he notices that streets are filled with banners bearing shepherd's crests, making him realize the burden and hope shepherd carries alone. Suddenly, Sori feels nauseated and dizzy after sensing a powerful malevolence in the town. He looks around and finds a sealed ruin, where the malevolence is coming from. He unlocks the door of the ruins with Alicia's royal sword, and the group enters the ruins, but Hellion bats suddenly attack them. Sori disperses them with the power of his sword, whereas Layla successfully purifies them with her power of flames. After dealing with Hellion bats, they find the bones of dead people, who were secretly killed for rebelling against the royal family. Their strong desire for revenge and grudges are the source of malevolence in the town. Layla tells Sori that Shepard's true goal is to purify the creator of Hellions, and the source of malevolence called the Lord of Calamity, who can change the world with his abnormal amount of malevolence. She suggests that he should prepare, and find solutions to deal with the Lord of Calamity before facing him in the future. Suddenly, the earth beneath Lady Lake starts to be disrupted, due to the excessive presence of malevolence. They escape from the ruin and find a dragon inside the tornado. Sori tries to stop the dragon from reaching the castle, but fortunately, the dragon leaves the town, making everyone think that Sori chased it away. Later, Sori meets Alicia and learns that she is going to Marlin to help people who are inflicted by the plague. He reveals his next destination to her, Rayfalk Spirit Crest, where he can find more clues regarding dragons. The next day, Sori finds out that Miklio left Lady Lake to get the legendary divine artifact so he can protect him. Sori understands his reasons and decides to go to continue his next destination with Layla. Sori and Layla reach Rayfalk and meet Edna, the Seraph of the Earth who is being attacked by Hellion. Edna uses her Earth power to defeat Hellion, but the Hellion stands up again. Sori then steps forward and strikes Hellion with his flaming sword multiple times to purify him, but then realizes his attacks are not affecting the Hellion because of the strong malevolence. Zavid, the Seraph of Air, appears and interrupts their fight by killing and burning Hellion using his gun. Suddenly, a dragon appears to attack them. Zavid reveals that this dragon is Edna's brother, Ezen, who he truly wants to kill. Layla informs Sori that he can't purify Ezen because he has become a fully manifested dragon with strong malevolence. He saves Edna from the dragon attack and takes her to a safe place. There, she explains to him that Ezen was a seraphim who used to love humans, but one day he suddenly became a dragon. Sori becomes determined to find a way to purify the Hellion, and intervenes in Zavaid and Ezen's fight. He fiercely attacks the dragon with his blade multiple times, but gets injured when Ezen slams him into a cliff. Despite his weak state, he rushes to save Edna from the dragon's fire breathing, but notices that Ezen has stopped breathing fire because he is hesitant to attack his sister and flies away from the scene. After this fight, Zavade promises that he will not kill Ezen unless Edna gives up on bringing him back. Edna agrees to form an ancient contract with Sori to become his sublord and in return, Sori must find a way to purify her brother. The trio then sets off to their next destination Rollins, where according to legends, people used to worship dragons as gods in ancient times. On his way, Sori meets Alicia's companions and assists them in fighting a Hellion who is causing a storm. Sori forms a rock shield on his arms to protect himself and hits the Hellion with a heavy punch while dodging his water ball's attack. Suddenly, a young dragon called Drake appears and injures the Hellion by attacking him. Young dragons can be purified, so Sori lands his finishing blow on Hellion and rushes forward to purify the Drake. But the Drake manages to fly away. Sori finds out where the Drake is heading and then goes to Marland. He notices a huge amount of malevolence in this city and deduces that the plague is caused by the Drake. Sori meets Alicia and discovers that his resonance has improved. People can now hear the Seraphim easily in his presence. Alicia breaks down in front of him and tells him nothing seems to be working in curing the plague. Suddenly, the Drake appears again who is now on the verge of becoming a full dragon. 
Sori blocks Drake's fireballs with his sword and jumps forward to strike him. But the Drake attacks Layla with his fireballs, forcing Sori to put himself in danger to protect her. Suddenly, Miklio appears with his divine artifact, a bow, and blocks the flames with its powers. Miklio agrees to form an ancient contract with Sori. Sori gets a new buff form and uses his newly gained bow to shoot the Drake with its beaming arrow, successfully purifying him. Later, Alicia informs Sori that Counselor Bartlow has ordered the troops to march toward Glavin Basin the border between Hayland and Rollins in order to incite war. Sori decides to join Alicia in her journey to stop the war but Layla tries to stop him, because war will have lots of malevolence created from grief and pain, which may engulf Sori into the dark side of the Force. On his way, Sori encounters a Hellionized human who is filled with malevolence due to the guilt of killing someone. Sori purifies the human Hellion and starts feeling sentimental in the process. But this incident only makes his resolve of stopping the war even stronger because he doesn't want people to fall into malevolence and calamity. Sori with Alicia and her troops then heads towards Glavin Basin. On their way, Sori tells Alicia that he will only help her to stop the war from starting in order to fulfill his duty as a shepherd. But if war breaks out, he will not take anyone's side. Later at night, Miklio asks Sori to take a break from his shepherd's duty and invites him to explore a nearby ruin. After reaching Glavin Basin, Sori witnesses the chaos and destruction of war and gets shocked by seeing how thousands of soldiers are contributing to the creation of Hellions with their malevolence. Sori feels discomfort with the overflowing malevolence, but still jumps into the battlefield with his sublords to purify every Hellion. He first strikes Hellions with his flaming sword to burn them, and then uses his earth power to punch them with his rock shield. In the end, he attacks Hellions with his arrow squall move, which shoots purification arrows at all Hellions, and as a result, it successfully purifies each and every single one of them. Afterward, Sori with his weakened self goes to the other side of the battlefield. There, he spots a human Hellion with an unimaginable amount of malevolence, and deduces that it is the Lord of Calamity named Heldolf. Sori strikes him with his blade to purify him, and sees a glimpse of his human form hidden beneath his malevolence. Sori then unleashes all his powerful moves and techniques to attack him, but realizes that his powers have no effect on the Lord of Calamity. Heldolf summons countless Hellions and challenges him to survive their malevolence. Sori tries to protect himself while using his flaming sword, but starts to get exhausted after trying to purify the countless amount of Hellions. Heldolf starts mocking him, but Sori continues to fight back while claiming he will purify the whole world. After seeing Sori's stubbornness, Heldolf decides to leave, claiming that he will allow Sori to become the people's hope in order to crush him and bring the ultimate despair. Sori's sublords help him disperse the remaining Hellions, and as a result, he finally manages to purify Hellions. After the war ends, Sori learns about Alicia's injury and runs back to see her. He asks her to become his squire so that both can help each other to prevent wars from happening in the world. Alicia accepts his offer and forms an ancient contract with him. As a result, she gains the ability to see the Seraphims and starts shedding tears of joy. In the next day, the Hellion responsible for injuring Alicia comes to attack him before he parts away. And Sori starts losing himself to the anger but quickly starts to control his emotions and purifies the Hellion. Rose then joins him on his next adventure to become stronger and defeat Heldolf. As they continued their trip, Sori and his companions sat together, observing Rose as she interacted with some suspicious businessmen. However, much to their delight, Rose refused to be deceived by their stolen goods and taught them a valuable lesson. Everyone admired Rose for her straightforward nature. As night fell, Sori found himself by the water's edge, practicing his purification skills. His task was to absorb all malevolence and offer forgiveness. Sori worked hard to train himself to recognize and stop various forms of contradicting malevolence, but he knew he had a long journey ahead. It required patience and time, just like the delicate balance between fire and water and something most of us don't have. Yet, Sori was determined to master that balance. The following day, they arrived at a bustling town. Sori's eyes widened as he stepped into the library and beheld the countless books lining the shelves. And for the record, it wasn't all the H type of content, or was it? This town was renowned as the largest trading center in the city, positioned right on the border. It was Rose's go-to place for her business dealings. As Rose led Sori through the town, they encountered a man named Maven 
who presented Rose with a special gift, the Gakaga Twins. These relics were discovered 200 meters underground at the Krishana ruins, and Rose had shown great interest in them. Sori was captivated by the sight of these ancient artifacts, as he had never seen anything like them before. Meeting Maven was a delight for Sori, as he learned that Maven was not only a storyteller, but also an adventurer. However, Rose had another person she wanted Sori to meet, a shepherd enthusiast named Gurin. Rose had her own reasons for wanting Sori to meet him, as it would benefit her business by lowering the price of Gurin's products. But before Sori could meet Gurin, the general of the Platinum Knights arrived, seeking Sori. Sori stepped forward, curious about why they wanted him. The general explained that they needed to escort Sori due to concerns about his extraordinary powers as a shepherd. Rose valiantly defended Sori's actions, insisting that he hadn't taken any lives. The defeated general remained his presence a reminder of the conflict. As night fell, Maven shared a peculiar secret with Sori, the Gakaga twins. According to Maven, if placed eye to eye in each corner of a room, these twins had the power to resolve conflicts. Sori held one of the twins and was amazed by its weight, sensing that it concealed hidden truths. Curious, Sori asked Maven if he knew how to purify a dragon. Though Maven had never encountered one, he explained that dragons were emerging more frequently due to the age of calamity and destruction. Maven also shared the story of the previous shepherd who pondered whether accepting a necessary evil could corrupt people. However, Sori was weary of answering questions. The drunken general joined the conversation. Okay I lied, he just wanted to drink. Well, he mentions that it's impossible to answer the question because humans live in a world beyond their control. Maven is interested in those words, mentioning the general has quite an opinion. The general then explains that to bend over on some occasions to keep things upright. He keeps drinking, probably to forget about it and Maven laughs. Sori gets up to go outside and train, making the general worry that he might escape. He apologizes to the seraphs for being late and notices Rose walking away. He asks Dezel where she is going, but he refuses to answer. Amidst the shadows, Rose had a mission to fulfill as a member of the Shattered Bones. She had to cleanse the city of its wicked inhabitants, and tonight, their target is the bishop, who was on the receiving end of justice. She and her group infiltrate the church, defeating all guards in sight. They end up meeting the bishop and reveal they just want to ask him some questions. The bishop agrees, understanding that if he doesn't, he will die. They ask him why he got a huge fortune hidden beneath the church. The bishop initially hesitates, calling it a lie, but reveals that's an emergency fund in case another calamity appears. Yet, the group reveals they found several hidden corpses underground. They ask if the bishop is trying to silence people. Before he can answer Rose appears from behind and slices her knife through his neck. Sori couldn't help but wonder about Rose's sudden disappearance during the night, but he decided not to bring it up during their morning breakfast. Instead, he inquired about Gurin. Rose confessed that she had to make a stop at his house. Just as they were about to resume their meal, the general unexpectedly appeared, seeking to apologize for his previous behavior. Over breakfast, he expressed genuine curiosity about Sori's extraordinary journey with the seraphs. However, their conversation was abruptly interrupted by news of an explosion near the church and the assassination of the bishop. The general hastily stood up to leave. Yet, Miklio urged Sori to accompany them, suspecting that malevolence might be behind the incident. As they arrived at the scene of destruction, Sori's suspicions were confirmed. The explosion had indeed been caused by malevolence. Delving further into the investigation, Sori, Miklio, and the general ventured into a mysterious cave. Inside, Sori made a startling realization about the nature of malevolence. Rose hurried to Gurin's place, only to find that he had already completed a decorative shelf and left to deliver it to the sanctuary. However, he hadn't returned since then, which raised suspicion. It was during this time that she encountered a wind seraph named Dezel, who was eager to assist her in defeating the evil people. Meanwhile, Sori and the general ventured deep underground, where they could feel a stronger presence of malevolence. They discovered reserves of Hellions and something in the water. Sori turned to Miklio for help in purifying the water. The general observed the powerful purification abilities of maternal water. However, Sori senses that the malevolence extended further into the cave. They reach a dead end, and despite the general's request for passage, they were halted by other knights who strictly adhered to their orders. Reluctantly, they turned back. The general began to suspect that something troubling was taking place beneath the sanctuary, just as Sori had warned. In the midst of the malevolence that surrounded them, Miklio couldn't help but feel confused. Why hadn't a malevolent dragon appeared? Seeking answers, Sori approached the general and inquired about any recent calamities. To his surprise, the general revealed that the capital was plagued by unceasing rain. 
As they emerged onto the surface, the leader of the Blue Storm Knights, Goodman, from the church army blocked their path, refusing to let them pass. Goodman wanted to know why they were investigating the underground cave, but they refused to answer. Suddenly, they hear an explosion across town and see a huge hurricane. Sori's attention was then drawn to Rose, who was sprinting towards the church. Sori and the Seraphs decided to follow her to check out the scene. Layla urgently informed Sori that Dezel was being consumed by malevolence and needed their help, even though he was assisting Rose in getting revenge for Guren's disappearance. Sori reaches Rose just in time and assured her that his friends were on their way to stop Dezel. Working together, the Seraphins harnessed their elemental powers to halt Dezel's destructive rampage. As the confrontation unfolded, Layla, the Fire Seraphim, unleashed a fireball to engulf the raging hurricane. The force of their clash shook the church, destroying the walls and causing debris to rain down upon Sori and Rose. Yet, Dezel swiftly used his wind abilities to divert the falling wreckage away from them. But their battle was far from over. Layla conjured an even bigger fireball and hurled it toward Dezel. However, Dezel shielded himself with a barrier, showing his resilience. Just as they were about to launch another attack, Rose intervened and told Dezel to stop. He reluctantly raised his arms in surrender. Curiosity was piqued, and later, Sori asked Dezel for an explanation regarding his destructive actions toward the church sanctuary. Dezel revealed the story of a man named Brad, who had played a pivotal role in raising Rose during her tumultuous upbringing amidst battlefields. Dezel had developed a deep fondness for Brad, as he was the leader of a mercenary group named Windriders. One day, Brad rescued Rose while she was still a child wandering on the battlefield. Brad swore to take care of Rose and told her everything about his organization. But Brad lost his life, and since then, Rose became the leader of the organization and took care of everything. Sori then met Goodman, who wanted an explanation for the earlier disturbance. Sori gave him a vague answer, making Goodman question if it was solved because of his shepherd's power. Yet, Sori admitted that he didn't possess the power to solve everything. He then asks about the general, and Goodman informed him that the general was being held in confinement. Sori doesn't understand why. But Goodman explains that it was because he was associated with the shepherd. Sori then asks Goodman what he wants from him. Goodman invites him to join the church army because of his power. Yet, Sori knew that they would exploit him for their own purposes, potentially sparking a war or overthrowing the imperial family. Sori refused and asked Goodman to escort him to the capital, where he could plead for the general's release. Later that evening, Miklio asked Sori what was going on. Sori explained that he's starting to understand what malevolence is, and he's been wondering what he will do once he completely figures it out. He knows that his duty is to purify it, but he thinks that his role as the Shefard is more than that. Layla appears and asks what he wants to do. Sori then expresses his desire to create a world without wars where both humans and seraphs could coexist peacefully. Returning to Rose's place, they encountered Maven, prepared to leave on a journey. He asks if Sori remembers the story he told about the former shepherd. Sori repeats the story word for word, and Maven shares that the most important thing in life is to stay true to oneself. Sori felt immense gratitude for the wise words of the 1,000-year-old storyteller. The Seraphs confirmed that they were true to themselves by following the shepherd. Layla also revealed that Alicia was also Sori's squire. She asks if he can hear her voice, revealing that he should be able to hear her voice despite the distance separating them. However, despite his efforts, Sori found it impossible to achieve this connection because he still had to prove his worth as the shepherd. Meanwhile, Alicia found herself caught in a fierce battle against her enemies. Caught off guard by a surprise attack, her unit was annihilated, leaving only a few survivors hiding in fear. Alicia was accused by Lord Bartlow of stealing from the government and branded as a traitor. Determined to honor the sacrifice of those who had laid down their lives for her safety, Alicia made a promise to herself and her comrades. Thinking about Sori's words, she vowed to become stronger and seek justice for their homeland. Sori excitedly shared his trip to the capital with Rose and asked if she could join him. She replied that she would love to, but she was too busy to go with them. Miklio, curious about Rose, inquired why Dezel seemed so attached to her. Sori pondered this question, wondering what secrets Rose held. As they watched Rose and her companions depart, both Sori and Miklio felt there was more to her than they knew. Miklio followed Rose, accompanied by Edna, while Sori traveled with Goodman to the capital. Boarding Rose's carriage, Miklio unexpectedly encountered Dezel. Miklio explained that he was keeping an eye on Dezel due to the previous incident caused by him. In turn, Dezel revealed the truth about Rose's mission, to assassinate the prince named Conan. Rose and her group sought justice for the betrayal of Brad and his comrades, intending to eliminate the man responsible. 
Edna was determined to inform Sori because she believes that no one deserves to die. But before she could leave, Dezel shared a heartbreaking truth with her. Rose, an innocent child, had been left alone on the battlefield and was forced to kill to survive. Dezel asks if she thinks that Edna should sit back and obey those who betrayed and killed her father. This only fueled Edna's intention to inform Sori. Miklio jumps down and told Edna to follow Dezel, while he would inform Sori. Meanwhile, Sori, who was riding in his own carriage with the leader, overheard Miklio's voice. Rose and her comrades patiently waited for the right moment to strike, targeting Prince Conan when he was alone. As they searched the castle, Rose discovered the prince surrounded by ten heavily armed guards. Sori sat worried about Miklio, until he suddenly hears his voice again, this time coming from a horse galloping towards them. There was no time to waste, so Sori quickly left a note for the leader and rushed toward Rose. Under the cover of darkness, Rose and her men sneaked into the castle to complete their mission. Just as Rose moved closer to the prince's sleeping chambers, Sori arrived at the castle. Time was running out. Memories of Brad's lifeless face flashed through Rose's mind as she poised the knife above the prince's body. Without hesitation, she struck his vital points. Right at that moment, Sori broke into the room and called out to Rose. But to their surprise, the prince was not dead. He stood up and cruelly taunted Rose while his guards arrived to protect him. Her anger burned inside her as she unleashed her fury on the guards. Sori desperately tried to intervene, but Dezel used his wind powers to stop him. However, Edna stepped in and struck Dezel, helping Sori. Rose was relentless as she chased after the fleeing prince. Yet, Sori believed that no one should be killed and followed her, attempting to stop her. Rose managed to catch up to Conan and tried to slice his throat. Yet, to her surprise, Conan used his hands to avoid the attack. As she looked closer, she noticed Kanon's eyes turned black. Sori also manages to catch up and realizes that Conan was a Hellion. Panic set in as Kanon launched a vicious attack on Rose, quickly dominating her in a fight. She got up and tried to fight back, yet, Sori told her to step back. However, his plea fell on deaf ears as the Hellion's power unleashed its devastating force, causing the very building they stood on to crumble. The Hellion grabbed her by the throat, and she stabbed his hand, giving Dezel a chance to attack from behind and kill the Hellion. Sori manages to catch Rose as they fall into the water and takes her to the shore. As she regained consciousness, Rose's first concern was the fate of Conan. Sori says that he thinks that Conan died when he fell into the lake, but Rose's determination to end him for good remained unflinching. She wants to dive into the lake to be sure that Kanon is dead, despite Sori saying that Kanon is no longer alive. Just as Rose was about to take matters into her own hands, Dezel intervened, preventing her from continuing. They all get on a carriage, heading to the capital, and Sori asks her if killing someone is good. She answers that someone must do it because there are people who deserve to be killed. Sori took the opportunity to enlighten Rose about malevolence and its pervasive effect on their world. He explained that everyone, including themselves, is tainted by this malevolence due to the overwhelming power of their negative emotions. Dezel then recounted his perilous journey to the Seraphs, sharing how he had sought to support Rose by becoming a vessel. After avenging Brad's tragic death, Dezel believed it was crucial for Rose to fulfill Brad's final wishes. In short, he just calls her Brad's puppet to fulfill his goal. Suddenly, the carriage stopped. Sori stepped out to discover that the Platinum Knights were looking for the Shepherd under the General's orders. Although Rose hesitated to trust them, Sori reassured her that it would be alright. The guards seemed to align with the general's views and offered to safely escort Sori away from the Blue Storm Knights. As they embarked on horseback through the darkened forest, a sense of unease washed over Sori. He felt the forest was filled with malevolence, causing it to decay and spread its corruption to other lands. The Seraphs advised Sori to move forward rather than attempt to purify the malevolence. Suddenly, a powerful gust of wind swept through the forest. But Dezel explained that it was merely a natural phenomenon caused by malevolence. Sensing the danger escalating, Sori urged his companions to rush to the end of the forest. Rose desperately questioned Sori, wondering if all her hard work had been in vain. But Sori, unable to find an answer, simply admitted that while he recognized killing is wrong, he couldn't bring himself to hate her for it. Rose felt completely powerless, and her overwhelming sorrow began to draw in malevolence. The malevolence tried to attack her, but Sori used his power to protect her. Rose's mind gets flowed with memories of the time she met Brad. She recalls that he saved her and taught her how to live. The group rushed forward as Sori diligently purified any traces of malevolence that approached and together they manage to escape the treacherous forest. Sori and his companions later meet with the general, 
who delivered startling news. Goodman could only confine the general until they reached the capital. Sori asks the general where they are right now and finds out he's in front of the residence of the Emperor of Rollins. The Emperor stepped outside to greet Sori and invited Sori inside. To Sori's astonishment, the Emperor inquired about the malevolence plaguing the capital. Although unable to see it himself, the Imperial family was aware of its existence. Confused, Sori asks how they know. The Emperor talks about Maven, the storyteller who told everything to his ancestors. The Emperor went on to reveal the tale of when someone performed a ritual that took emotions away from humanity, causing malevolence to vanish from the world. However, there was a person named Velvet Crow. The ritual didn't affect her because her heart was filled with pure rage and hatred for someone. Those emotions caused a calamity and the malevolence returned. The Emperor then reveals some news to Sori. He explains that he found that Highland is facing internal strife, resulting in Alicia being branded as a traitor and arrested. This revelation came as a shock to Sori, who yearned to see Alicia but knew he couldn't leave until the malevolence in the capital was dealt with. The Emperor expressed his intention to accompany Sori, explaining his desire to investigate the church, which appeared to be hiding a secret. In the carriage bound for the capital, Rose explains she wanted to negotiate something with Sori. She says that she harmed several people with the goal of saving those who are powerless. But she realized that there are things that cannot be saved that way. She knows their most powerful enemy is malevolence, but she cannot see it. So, she wants to perform a squire pact with him because, despite his power, Sori cannot do everything alone. Layla informed Rose of the risks involved. She will gain powers by performing the pact with Sori. But, if the shepherd were to perish, so too would the squire. This revelation caused Sori to reflect on Alicia, but Layla assured him that she was aware of this condition and still accepted it. Layla emphasized that a squire would also be able to eradicate the malevolence, which was enough to convince Rose to accept the role. Sori had to carefully consider this proposition, as adding more squires would put additional stress on his body. However, upon entering the capital, Sori felt a heavy heart and struggled to breathe. He never knew about the conditions of the squire pact and wishes he could do it alone. As they approached the church, an overwhelming malevolence emanated from within. The Pope came to greet them, forbidding their entry into the church. However, Dezel had had enough and used his power to break down the door. Sori and the Seraphs hurried inside towards the source of the malevolence. To their astonishment, they discovered the decaying corpse of a dragon. Sori hesitated, unsure if he could purify it. Layla mentions that Rose's spiritual power could help him purify it. But Sori refuses because he doesn't want to put someone's life at risk. Rose, however, stepped forward bravely, declaring her desire to become his squire despite all the risk. Layla conducted the squire pact ritual, giving Rose the power to see and eradicate malevolence. As soon as it ends, Rose looks at the dragon and gets scared when she sees malevolence for the first time. Sori started to purify it, but the malevolence tried to resist it. He asked Rose for his assistance. They united their forces, yet the malevolence tried to attack them from the sides. Thankfully, the Seraphs dealt with the attacks, allowing Rose and Sori to combine their powers to successfully purify the dragon and stop the relentless rain. Rose felt exhausted right after finishing the purification. She opens her eyes and sees Dezel for the first time, but she then focuses on Sori, telling him she's impressed that he's been purifying malevolence alone. Yet the two suddenly hear Aisha's voice. She tells him that she's on the outskirts of Ladalik, surprising Sori because he thought she was arrested. She explains it was a lie, but she confirms that she was accused of being a traitor. She reveals the situation is dire and that she needs his power to deal with malevolence tornadoes. Despite her duty as a princess to assist her citizens in the aftermath, the army arrived to take her away. However, her loyal comrades bravely stepped forward to defend her. Before any attack could be made, a menacing Hellion emerged and swiftly swallowed the entire army. Alicia and her comrades, tending to the wounded, seized the opportunity to escape. As Alicia valiantly shielded a wounded individual, the Hellion closed in on her. Just as it seemed all hope was lost, a mysterious Seraph came to her aid. Introducing himself as Zavade, he revealed that a dragon was poised to descend upon the city due to the worsening situation. Aware that waiting for Sori would be too late, Zavade possessed the perfect weapon to combat the dragon's threat. Alicia received shocking news, her mentor faced a dire fate, crucifixion and public display. To spare him, she was presented with two options, either to betray her own people and kill them or to buy herself some time and allow her mentor to perish. Deep in thought by the Serene Lake, she realized she had a duty to fulfill as the princess. Determined, she vowed to save her mentor under the cover of darkness without causing harm to anyone. Frantically, Rose awakened Sori and urgently beckoned him outside. 
as he looked ahead. His eyes widened at the sight of a colossal tornado heading towards Alicia's city. Sori instinctively knew that Alicia was in grave danger and hastily prepared to depart early in order to help. As Alicia infiltrated the castle, she came face to face with the guards. But without hesitation, she and her brave comrades swiftly broke through their defenses. Meanwhile, Sori and the others followed the tornado, desperately trying to catch up with its incredible speed as it raced towards the city. However, as the Lord anxiously waited for Alicia to save her mentor, he began to realize that time was running out. Alicia was not coming to him. In a moment of realization, Sori knew that he had to purify the tornado. He could sense the immense malevolence within the person controlling it. Some individuals could withstand and suppress such darkness, while others would succumb to its power. Sori could even make out the monstrous shape lurking within the tornado, a fearsome beast. Dragons had always proven impossible to purify, as nobody had dared to take on the challenge. But now, Sori had no choice. He had to face the beast head on, even if it meant risking his own life to fulfill his dreams. As Layla witnessed Sori's determination, she couldn't help but feel a surge of joy. As Alicia ventured through the castle, she encountered numerous challenges along the way. Despite these obstacles, she persevered and eventually reached her father's chambers. Alicia had come to personally plead with her father to end the ongoing conflict, hoping to put an end to the malevolent feelings that were wreaking havoc on the land. As she approached her father, she couldn't shake off a sense of impending danger. Alicia's intuition warned her of an approaching dragon. However, before she could address her concerns, the Lord abruptly burst into the chambers, accusing Alicia of treachery and even attempting to assassinate the king. Alicia, not wanting to engage in a fight, found herself cornered by the Lord's threatening sword. Just as the situation seemed dire, the king bravely intervened, sacrificing himself to save Alicia's life. However, the Lord remained relentless, determined to turn the people against her. But his sinister motives were soon exposed when his true form was unveiled to his own men. It became clear that he was responsible for the king's murder. With nowhere to hide, the Lord leapt off the castle roof, his facade shattered. Alicia witnessed an extraordinary sight, but she felt powerless to act. Suddenly, a tornado appeared, only to disperse and reveal a fearsome fire-breathing dragon. In that moment, she heard Sori's voice calling out to her, asking for her assistance as his squire. The Seraphs were valiantly battling the malevolent creatures known as Hellions, but Sori needed to purify the dragon. This was an unprecedented feat, and the world held its breath, waiting for a myth to be shattered. Nikleo skillfully brought the dragon down, and Sori turned to Rose for help. As Sori focused on purifying the beast, Rose struggled under the weight of the burden. Nonetheless, Sori was filled with joy to see her determination. When Rose finally collapsed, Princess Alicia rushed to her aid. Alicia bravely asked Sori to transfer the malevolence to her, despite the immense difficulty. Together, they persevered, standing steadfastly behind Sori. With one final surge of determination, Sori successfully purified the dragon. The impossible had been achieved. However, before they could revel in their victory, a messenger arrived with grave news. The Lord of Calamity was poised to engulf the world in malevolence. After the purification, Rose and Alicia were rushed to the hospital, but they remained unconscious for nine long days. Their bodies had endured immense strain. Sori sensed their struggle and informed the Seraphs that they had finally awakened. Alicia was told about the people's heartfelt desire to see her recover fully. Both Rose and Alicia were ready to face the challenge once more, if necessary, in order to save the world. Meanwhile, Dezel engaged in a fierce battle against Simon, the aid of the Lord of Calamity. Sori discovered this and pleaded with Dezel to stop, but Dezel was determined to uncover the truth. Simon revealed to them that the Lord of Calamity would stop at nothing to bring about the end of the world. She led Sori and the others to the place where the Lord resided, surrounded by people consumed by malevolence. The growing malevolence in the north threatened to spread to other parts of the world. Overwhelmed with these daunting prospects, Sori collapsed to the ground. Simon warned them once more before vanishing into thin air. Sori was determined to head north, and to his surprise, the Seraphs eagerly agreed to join him on his quest. Layla, a trusted ally, revealed that the book Sori had been relying on was actually left behind by the former shepherd. Layla handed him another book, The Celestial Records, containing the coveted secrets of the world that Michael had relentlessly pursued. As Sori began to read, he uncovered the beginnings of the Age of Calamity, as foretold by the Emperor. Just as Sori was preparing for his journey, Alicia approached him with a resolute determination to accompany him. 
Despite the responsibility of rebuilding her city, Alicia entrusted her mentor to oversee the task while she embarked on this important mission. Together, Sori and Alicia set off on their adventure, and along the way, they were aided by kind-hearted individuals who were eager to support the young shepherd. During the dark and treacherous nights, Sori would tirelessly train to become stronger. As their journey progressed, the brave general and wise leader also joined their mission. The odds were heavily stacked against Sori, but they knew they had to give it their all to defeat the formidable Lord of Calamity. Rose and Alicia, as the dedicated squires, were tasked with testing their armatization. This powerful form allowed humans and seraphs to combine their strength in combat. It was the Shepherd's trump card, but it came with great risks for the squires. However, Dezel was determined to explore every avenue to grow stronger before facing the Lord of Calamity. As they ventured into the realm of armatization, both Rose and Alicia were overwhelmed by an immense fatigue. The Seraphs, watching over them, had to transform entirely into weapons, while the squires served as the gun battery. During the journey, Dezel anxiously asked Simon if she had betrayed the Lord in order to warn them. The Lord was unstoppable, and he would stop at nothing to achieve his goals. Rose and Alicia were still training hard to master the art of armatization. They had to envision the weapon and find the perfect balance to succeed, but it was proving to be quite a challenge. Despite the difficulty, they refused to give up. After reading the second celestial records, Sori discovered a remarkable power that could create entire worlds. Its source, known as the Wellspring, lay in the north. This power connected the world through earth pulses, which maintained the delicate balance of our existence. However, when these earth pulses collapsed, it brought about the dreaded Age of Calamity. Sori concluded that this may be why the Lord of Calamity resided in the north. As they rested during the night, Sori was abruptly awoken by the piercing screams of Rose. Startled, he quickly rose from his slumber only to discover malevolent creatures pouring out from the other side of the mountain. With ease, Miklio purified them, prompting Sori to command everyone to swiftly traverse the mountain. Moving forward, the fog grew thicker, obscuring their vision and forcing them to stay close together. The malevolence in the air posed a dangerous threat to them all. Suddenly, a clearing revealed a breathtaking sight, a multitude of tainted dragons soaring through the sky. These were once noble seraphim, corrupted by darkness. Sori knew he had to purify them all, a task that indicated the presence of the dreaded Lord of Calamity. The seraphim rallied alongside Sori, lending their aid in the purification efforts. Inspired by their bravery, Rose requested Dezel to armatize her, successfully merging their powers. Alicia, too, yearned to partake in this extraordinary fusion and, to her delight, she succeeded. Together, they joined Sori in his mission to purify the tainted dragons and vanquish the impending threat. Simon reappeared, wreaking havoc by destroying one of the carriages. She demanded answers from the Lord, who obliged. Inquiring about the shepherd's whereabouts, the Lord of Calamity requested Simon to sacrifice herself to the malevolence. Surprisingly, she willingly embraced this fate, transforming into a furious dragon. As Sori witnessed the Lord of Calamity's presence before him, he learned of the Lord's intention to descend to the depths of the earth and celebrate the malevolence. And just like that, the Lord vanished into thin air. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Sori commanded everyone to pursue the Lord. Meanwhile, Rose, who had acted as a vessel for Dezel, collapsed, her body convulsing. Determined to aid her recovery, Sori employed his healing protection. As for Dezel, he longed to confront the dragons and purify them, striving to fulfill Rose's wish for an ideal world. Dezel seized Zabade's gun, recognizing it as the ultimate weapon for purification. The group arrived in a northern town, seeking refuge from the blizzard, and hoping to uncover the Earth Pulse beyond. Sori, driven by curiosity, approached Layla and inquired about the Innominate and the Five Lords, wondering if they held the highest rank among the Seraphim. The Earth Pulse Point stood as a prominent temple, drawing no coincidence that the Lord of Calamity lurked there. Sori understood that to bring an end to the ceaseless warfare and malevolent sentiments, they must learn from the past. Rose accidentally overheard Dezel's plan to leave her in the town for further recovery, but her determination to aid the Shepherd and purify the world remained unwavering. She would willingly armatize, if necessary. In the dream, Sori saw a mysterious woman guiding him towards the path he believed in. When he awoke, the blood moon filled the sky, and he instantly recognized who it represented. It was a sign that it was time to move forward, to face the challenges ahead. The Seraphim, the Shepherd, and the Squires were granted permission to venture beyond this point, as it was a difficult path for humans to tread. Sori was overjoyed to discover that humans and Seraphim could coexist in perfect harmony. Together, they would reclaim the world from the clutches of the Lord of Calamity, and restore peace to all. 
As they continued their journey, they encountered a treacherous path tainted by malevolence, and to their surprise, they found themselves surrounded by mighty dragons. Among them stood Simon, a powerful adversary. Dezel, filled with determination, stepped forward to assist Sori in purifying the dragons. However, Sori, knowing the danger that awaited him, halted Dezel's advance. He understood that it was not safe for his dear friend to face this perilous task alone. Realizing that Sori alone couldn't purify every single dragon, the other Seraphim joined forces to aid Dezel in his purifying efforts. Together, they would overcome the malevolence and triumph over the darkness that threatened their world. Dezel used his incredible power over the wind to scatter the ferocious dragons blocking their path. Together, Dezel and Rose joined forces and transformed into a powerful duo. They soared through the air, heading straight for the center dragon. Despite their valiant efforts to fend off the attacks, Rose could feel herself growing weaker with each passing moment. With determination in her eyes, Rose pushed forward and finally reached the heart of the chaos. It was then that Dezel made a difficult decision. He knew that in order to save everyone, he had to sacrifice himself by becoming the very wind that would purify the dragons. Rose couldn't argue with his noble sacrifice, understanding that it was for the greater good. Reluctantly, she parted ways with Dezel and watched as he unleashed his purification upon the dragons, including Simon. The display of immense power amazed Sori and the others, filling them with pride. Although Dezel was no longer physically present, he visited Rose in her mind, urging her to share with Sori that sometimes sacrifices must be made to create a better world. Grateful for Dezel's selflessness, Rose pledged to fulfill their fallen comrade's dreams. After Dezel vanished from the world, Rose approached Sori and delivered a firm slap urging him to learn from the past and honor Dezel's sacrifice. Determined to press forward, they ventured into a cave where an overwhelming surge of power coursed through the ground. Sori sensed the presence of the Lord of Calamity, not just malevolence. Suddenly, the ground trembled, and the cave began to crumble, but Zavade swiftly enveloped them with a protective barrier, signifying the awakening of the Five Lords. Time was of the essence. Meanwhile, the Lord of Calamity had captured the leader of the Five Lords, preventing them from intervening in the impending battle. Undeterred, Sori and the others finally reached the throne of the Lord of Calamity, only to find the leader transformed into a fearsome dragon. The Lord explained that this transformation was a result of conflicting forces, and the only way to dismantle these contradictions was through sheer power. He dared the shepherd to settle it once and for all. Sori assumed his form and bravely approached the Lord, determined to cleanse him. But much to his surprise, the Lord thwarted his every effort. Suddenly, Sori found himself standing in an expansive field, facing Master Michael, the former shepherd. They had been transported back to the original village, deep within the Lord of Calamity's memories. In a twist of fate, Michael and Heldalf, the Lord of Calamity, had once been friends. Michael harbored a dream of uniting humans and Seraphim in a peaceful village, and he had asked Heldalf for his assistance. However, their dreams were shattered when a devastating war erupted, with Heldalf at the center of the chaos. The shepherd confronted him, questioning how he could have allowed such destruction. Betrayed, Michael learned from the leader of the Five Lords that she was consumed by darkness, and only the future Lady of the Lake held the power to purify her. Witnessing the devastation caused by Heldalf, Michael cursed him to an eternity of solitary existence. In a tense moment, Sori witnessed Michael's ultimate sacrifice as he gave his life to curse Heldalf. The malevolence that initially took root in Heldalf's heart grew over time, unleashing an age of calamity. Now, Sori stood as the last hope to purify Heldalf and restore peace. The Lord understood that Heldalf's loneliness had pushed him beyond redemption, yet the Seraphs reminded Sori of the importance of mutual support among people. However, Heldalf rejected this notion, his appearance distorted by an eternal curse and the ever-growing malevolence. As Sori launched his attack, he was forcefully thrown back, realizing that he couldn't purify Heldalf alone. But then, a brilliant idea struck him. He would combine the powers of all the elemental seraphs. Zavade, the wind seraph, also entered into a contract with Sori. Now, as the shepherd, Sori possessed the extraordinary power of all the elements at his disposal. With each seraph's power merging into him, Sori reached his ultimate form, ready to face Heldalf head-on. Episode 13 Even though combining with everyone's powers was too dangerous for Sori, he refused to give up. The Lord of Calamity grew even larger, making all of Sori's attacks ineffective as Heldalf blocked them effortlessly. Sori remained determined to purify Heldalf from the curse that consumed him. The squires urged Sori to transfer the malevolence to them, despite the immense burden it placed on them. 
With a powerful strike, Sori managed to purify the Lord of Calamity, completely eradicating the malevolence. However, Heldolf did not transform into a human as hoped. Suddenly, malevolence erupted from the earth, pouring into the empty vessel of the Lord of Calamity. Heldolf became even stronger, fueled by an unlimited reserve of malevolence. The world trembled in fear, as everyone worried it would be consumed by the malevolence. But Sori refused to surrender. He resolved to seal Heldolf even deeper than the Earth Pulse itself. In a daring plan, Sori chose to accompany Heldolf, using the time to calm his anger and attempt to purify him. The stakes were high, but Sori's determination remained unwavering. It was the only way for Sori to go, and the others would spread the word. With one final armatization, Sori bravely pushed the Lord of Calamity into the fiery lava and deep underground. He believed in a world where Seraphim and humans could coexist peacefully. As everyone gathered in the Sommer Cave, the leader of the Five Lords shared the uplifting news of the new path that the Earth was embarking on. Miklio urged them not to succumb to sadness but to carry on the duty left by Sori and create a beautiful world. Alicia, filled with grace and determination, ascended to the throne as the Queen of Ladle Lake. The Emperor of Rollins visited her city, marking the beginning of a new era of cooperation between humans and Seraphim. The humans started offering their devotion to the Seraphim, fostering a harmonious existence between the two. Malevolence was now at a reasonable rate, ensuring a safer world for all. Rose continued to lead the Shatterbones and flourish in her role as a successful trader. Meanwhile, Miklio tirelessly searched for ancient ruins, hopeful that he would be there when Sori awoke. Years later, as Miklio continued his travels, he suddenly heard Sori's voice. Intrigued, Miklio followed the sound, which led him straight to his long-lost friend. Heldolf, once consumed by darkness, had now been purified and was eager to begin anew. Meanwhile, Sori desired to return to his hometown and reunite with his beloved grandpa. As they journeyed together, Sori was overjoyed to witness the world restored to its breathtaking beauty. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.